What is up wildlife? My name is Johnny and if we haven't had the chance to meet, I'm the middle school director and I'm so excited you guys are joining us for another week of wildlife weekend recap where we do a quick little like 10 maybe 15 minute recap of what we learned this past Wednesday at Wildlife. If you didn't get a chance to join us, that's okay. Take a look at this video. Make sure you guys download the message note sheet you guys can get on our website um, or in the email that you guys should have gotten the link to with this video. So let's go ahead and pray and then we'll get started. So Jesus, thank you so much that we just have an opportunity right now just to come before you and learn more about you. We pray in this time that we'll learn um, really what it means to be a passionate Christ follower as we learn um, more of the fruit of the Spirit and how we can apply these to um, our lives. So we can honor and glorify you. We give this time to you. We love you. We thank you again for this opportunity. In your name, amen. So wildlife, we've been in this series called Passionate. And in this series, we've been looking at the fruit of the Spirit. And what the fruit of the Spirit are pretty much are is that they are pretty much characteristics of God. And as followers of Jesus, we want to reflect and shine Jesus, uh, his uh, characteristics to other people. So with that, let's read Galatians 5, 19 through 23. And this is just a little recap of what we've been learning. So it says, The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, a lot of terrible stuff, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, sorry, dissensions, uh, it's a hard word to say, guys, uh, factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who are like this uh, will not inherit the kingdom of God. But then the Apostle Paul, who wrote this letter to the church in Galatia years and years and years ago, before either of you or I were even a thought, uh, it says this that in verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, which is another word for patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Now, what we can see is that the last couple weeks we were talking about love and how there are different types of love. We can go back and watch that video if you like. And last week we talked about joy and how the joy of the Lord, knowing God and serving Him, is what joy truly is, and that's where it comes from. And this week we're going to be talking about peace. Now, if you're like me, when you think of peace, you may think of like hippies or you know the peace sign stuff like that. But what we're going to see is that as followers of Jesus, we need to be peacemakers. That where we go, we need to show the love of Jesus to other people by bringing the peace that God has given us through knowing and serving Jesus in our everyday life. So with that, let's open up our Bibles to Matthew chapter 26. And we're going to be starting at verse 47. It says this, While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. Now what you need to know is that with this, if you guys know maybe some of uh, stories in the Bible, that we know that before this, Jesus and his 12 disciples had a last supper, you know, dinner. You guys are probably pretty aware of that. And uh, Judas went off and got all, you know, the 30 pieces of silver and he came to them, uh, kind of betray, uh, betray Jesus and uh, have him kind of be arrested. And that's where we're picking up with this. So while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the 12, arrived. With him was a large crowd armed with swords and clubs sent from the chief priests and elders of the people. Now the betrayer, again Judas, had a Arranged, to, uh, uh, arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man, uh, and uh, then you can arrest him. Verse 49, going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Greeting, Greetings, Rabbi, which is just a fancy word for teacher and kissed him. Now what you need to know here is that this was not written in 2020 and this was not written in America at all. So it's a different culture, a different time, a different time. And during this time is that Jewish men would kiss each other as a greeting on the cheek. Um, and this would be a form of respect, showing a respect to one another, kind of like a greeting. Now again, we don't do this in America. We don't do this in, you know, in Chatsworth and Simi Valley. It's just not part of our culture. What you need to understand too is that this again was not written in our culture, all right? But what's interesting is that Judas does this. He kind of kisses Jesus on the cheek as a greeting, but it's a very hypocritical greeting because he's not showing Jesus respect because he's pretty much betraying Jesus and selling Jesus out. Let's keep reading. Verse 50, Jesus replied, do what you came for. Friend. Then the men stepped forward and seized Jesus and arrested him. With that, one of Jesus' companions, known as Peter, reached for his sword, drew it back, and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Really violent, right? Put your sword away, put your sword back in its place, Jesus said to him. For all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Do you think I cannot call on my father, and he will not at once put at my disposal? 
more than 12 legions of angels. But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled that say it must happen in this way? Now, what you need to know is that a legion of soldiers was roughly about 6,000 soldiers. And what Jesus is saying is like, hey, do you not think I can call in God, my Father in heaven, and he would send down 12 legions of angels to protect me and to uh, help me out? And a rough estimate of that is that is that's about 72,000 angels angels. So what we can see here is that Jesus is telling Peter, who Peter was trying to meet, uh, make peace and be a peacemaker in this situation, Jesus is like, hey dude, put your sword away. You are embarrassing everyone. And also, a little, little side note, if I was Peter, I would have tried to aim for the guy's head, but we, what we can see here is that Peter clearly missed the guy's head and missed and hit the guy's ear. So what we know is that Peter's a terrible aim, all right? That's just a side note. But getting back into this, what we can learn from this passage of scripture is that Peter was trying to be a peacemaker, but he ended up doing more harm than good. So what we can learn from this is that oftentimes when we try to make peace with other people, whether it's a friendship, uh, you know, with our parents, whoever, we often try to do it on our own strength, on our own power, and not inviting God into it, much like Peter did, right? Peter drew his sword, tried to go through the guy's head, uh, missed, hit the guy's ear, and, Peter, and Jesus is like, dude, stop, you're embarrassing yourself and you're embarrassing me a little bit, right? And what we need to do when we are trying to make peace is that we need to invite God into it, right? Let's look at verse 52 again. It said, put your sword away. Uh, put your sword back in its place. Jesus said to him, for all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Because oftentimes when we try to do things on our own without inviting God, Jesus into it, we're going to end up doing more harm than good. So here's the first truth I want you guys to remember. Write it down if you're taking notes. True peace is knowing and serving God while sharing that peace with others. See, what you need to understand is that God kicked us out of the Garden of Eden. He kicked out Adam and Eve because they sinned and rebelled against God. And in doing so, we have got had, you know, we had like the wrath of God on us. But God had a plan from the very beginning. If you want to look back to Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, he had a promise that he would send someone to defeat sin and death. And that person is his son, Jesus. And what you need to understand too is that while we were still sinners and rebelling against God, Christ, Jesus, died for us so that we can be with perfect peace and in perfect relationship with God once again, as long as we believe that Jesus is who he says he is. You see that Jesus died so that we can have peace with God once again. In Colossians 1, 19 through 20, it says this, for God was pleased to have all of his fullness dwell in him, who is Jesus. And through him, Jesus, again, through him, to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. See, what you need to understand is that God was pleased to have his whole being in his son Jesus in order to make peace with you and me. But we just need to believe in Jesus and trust in him, right? So here's a question I have for you, is that do you have a relationship with God? Again, that's on your note sheets, write that down. Do you have a relationship with God? It's a simple yes or no. And if it's a yes, Awesome. Another question I have for you is that are you making peace wherever you go? Are you being a peacemaker? Not like Peter, right? We don't, we're not going to do it on our own strength. We need to rely and trust and be with Jesus with that. But if you're not, if you don't have a relationship with God, it's totally okay. The question I have for you is then why? What is stopping you from being in a relationship with God? And that's only something that you can answer. But here's the thing, if you want to have a relationship with God, all you have to do is pray to Him and ask Him into your heart. But if there's anything that you guys remember, here's the one thing I want you guys to remember. It's going to be on your note sheet. Only a child of God can bring the message of peace, of knowing God, to others. Be a peacemaker. So let's go ahead and pray. Jesus, thank you so much that we just have an opportunity every single week to come before you and learn more about you. I pray as we seek out this coming week that are we asking the question, are we answering, are we being a peacemaker? And anyone right now that is, uh, whether hearing this and then they don't have a relationship with you, I just pray right now that you would meet them where they're at, that you would reveal yourself to them. We love you and we thank you for this time. In your name, amen.